Okay, I'm often asked how do I raise or how do you raise resilient children? And I'm usually asked that when I'm speaking at teachers' conventions or at schools. So today I'm going to share with you three tips on how you can do that. My name is Zaheen Nanji and I help you embrace change, bounce back and flex your attitude so you can make resilience your first reflex. So before I share the three tips with you, what I would like to do is give you four important points so that you can understand after why the tips are so important. So here we go. And the four important things that I'm gonna share with you are one, you have to understand that children are doing the best that they can at any moment. Point number two, is that you can't expect them to get instant results. It takes time. Point number three is that every negative behavior that you see has a positive intention behind it. And number four, allow your child to make mistakes and then teach him or her how to learn from those mistakes, all right? So keeping that in mind, I'm going to share with you the three tips. Ready? All right. Number one, we tend to use things like don't do that, you shouldn't do that, or stop that, you know, and those are all negative commands. What I want you to do is you can use that, but become aware of that right away and then follow up with a positive command. For example, don't make a mess. I, and then you follow up with a positive command and say, I want you to be careful with that dish when you set that on the table. When you just say, don't make a mess, they, they only hear the negative, all right? And also don't make a mess, you know, when you use words like don't, not, or no, the mind strips out the words don't. All they heard was, I am going to make a mess, right? So there you have it, number one. Tip number two is that you want to avoid labeling them. Why am I saying that? Because they grow up thinking that that is what they are. We tend to say things like, Max is messy, Susan is clingy, Angie is cranky, right? So they grow up thinking that that's what they are. Instead, what I want you to do is reset that as a behavior. So instead of saying, Susan is so clingy, what you can say is, Susan loves to give hugs and snuggles up so that she feels loved and secure. How does that sound? Put down in the comments if that makes sense to you. If we say, Max is messy, what you can say is, and then again, reset that as a behavior by saying, you know what, Max just has a way of putting things around his room, but I know that he can clean up after himself. You see how that makes a difference? All right, and number three is all about goal setting. You as a parent have to teach your child how to goal set at an early age so as they grow up, they know how to meet their goals. So what you can do is decide with them how they want to set their goals. So you give them choices. So here's an example. Do you want to clean your room now or after dinner? Let them make the choice. So they will say, can I do that af after dinner? Sure. Now after dinner, you'll go in and figure out or find out if they're actually cleaning their room. And if they're not, you can say, you made a choice to clean your room after dinner. And because they made the choice, you can hold them accountable. So there you have it, three tips. First is when you catch yourself using a negative command, follow up with a positive statement after in an assertive tone. Second thing is, is you want to stop labeling your child and reset that as a behavior. Third thing is that you want to give them a choice when 
they have to set a goal like cleaning their room doing their homework all right anything like that so what I want you to do is put in the comment section how you found this and uh, if you want some more information about children or how how to um, make them more stronger and you know things like that let me know so I can share more uh, or if you want to know anything else let me know again in the comment section I'd love to hear from you all right take care now bye